when everything doesn't go right, uh, this is probably one of the hardest weeks I've had. But um, I will also say that it's the start of the year. January, February are always very slow uh, for me, coming from construction and what have you. It's always like nothing January, February, the wheels start to turn, etc. Um, but it's been an expensive month. When the van broke down, um, basically they've had to change. Uh, if you imagine this is the right hand wheel, then there's the interlink that goes up to the gearbox in the middle. All of that's had to be changed. Um, basically the case is cracked on this. What, what looks like has happened before I bought the vehicle is it's been banged on the right hand wheel and basically it's done that with the actual um, shaft and cracked the case and damaged it. Um, it survived two months but hey ho, I mean I, can I chase the guy? I could actually chase the guy in Spain to get me pay for the damage um, because in Spain even on second hand cars you've got a six month guarantee. What I'm thinking though the amount of hassle it's going to be to chase him because um, no doubt he's going to be hiding and everything else now because I mean it was only a 2,200 euro vehicle um, which in UK terms you'd absorb this sort of stuff because it's normal you know you buy an old car you're going to expect something to be shot on it because people got rid of it for a reason otherwise you keep it until it dies um, so from that point of view I'm probably just going to absorb the 700 euros dent in my wallet the self-employment cost me about a thousand euros for the next six months as well frustrating thing on that is I don't actually need the self-employment as a business I just need it for processing so I've basically spent a thousand euros on paperwork um, could I have done more of it myself the answer is yes but it wouldn't have worked out any cheaper because the problem in Spain is, like the Philippines, um, when you start getting involved in business of bureaucracy, I say bureaucracy, not business, um, you, you have to go through hoops all the time. It's like there was a guy from Finland that went to get his, his daughter lost her residency card. And they then made him basically resubmit all his paperwork. He didn't need to do that. But if he'd actually got a lawyer to do it, they'd have probably just given him a new one. It's just the way Spain is. At the moment, there does seem to be um, more of an anti-immigration thing going on. Um, just from the feeling. I'm not saying that they are anti-immigrant. Because um, let's let's be honest, Germany is getting ninety nine percent of everybody coming off from Syria, and um, Syria, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, everywhere else that are pleading alongside the Syrians to be escaping. Um, well, ninety percent are probably migrant; they're not actually uh, asylum seeking. Uh, and I won't really top, touch on that topic too much because most of them have no right of access to Germany anyway um, because they should have been processed at the first country. But, um, and a lot of them aren't from where they say they're coming from. Uh, but, so this week has hammered me financially. It's cost me 1,700 euros. Chop that off. I've had the really bad flu for the last two weeks. Now... I generally just soldier on. I'm not one who normally gets affected by illness. Um, but this is like cut my productivity down ridiculously because you just feel completely drained. Um, which is unusual for me. Normally I can just push on through. But like today, I, I've slept, I've sleeping, I'm sleeping a lot more than I would normally. Normally I can get like eight hours a day and I'm fine. But. I'm finding with this flu, you just want to sleep all the time, which is really unusual. So, this is where we are. Now, the other side of this is the wholesale stuff's turned up. So, I have got some positive news. Um, the fish is available. Dog food, I've got to sort out because I think there's issues relating to the quantities. Because I think that the quantities were already there. They would 
move quite easily, but at the same time, people don't want to buy stuff if they can't see it. So it's one of those um, awkward situations. But there's electrical goods, there's um, the fish, there's suntan lotion, there's all sorts of stuff that are easy to sell products. So I'm hoping to start pushing the wholesale stuff. Now, if you're in Europe, this is an opportunity for you because I can wholesale it to you. It doesn't matter where you are in Europe. Most of this, these products cannot be sold in the UK. There's licensing reasons. Um, nothing untoward. It's basically to do with the, there's local agreements that these people can sell in the UK. So if there's um, distribution outside the UK, it's fine. But there's an agreement that you only supply these people within the UK. So these factories can produce the items. They're just not allowed to sell it within the UK itself. So say the dog food. The dog food is mass produced in the UK and already has contracts with all the big supermarkets, etc. So you're not allowed to sell it. They've all, it's a closed shop in the UK. They can sell it overseas but cannot sell it in the UK. So the whole of Europe's available for it, except for the UK, bizarrely. Um, but there's loads of goods like that. And this is why I thought, well, I'll, I'll throw this in here, because if you're in Germany, you're in France, you're in Belgium, you're in Netherlands or wherever, there may be a market. Because you could do it by the pallet. You could do, you know... Uh, it's giving you access to stuff that you may not be able to source elsewhere. And there's a lot of stuff available. Um, I'm going to start cataloging it. I'm just waiting for the van to come back. The van's due back today um, once its repairs are done. Um, but basically what happened is they, they fixed the van, put it on the rack, you know, took it for a test drive, come back, and it dropped all the oil out again. So they put it on the ramp, they could see a big crack right the way along the case, which is why it's like, oh, we're going to have to change this, change that. Um, so I'm now waiting for it to come back. They managed to get get the parts for it, and I'm just waiting for them to go, yeah, we've done it, it's working, it's fine, come and pick it up. Uh, once I've done that, I can get you some photos of the stuff that we've currently got here. This is all sorts, all sorts, though. Uh, one of the good ones is electrical items because here in Spain most of the electrical stuff that is local unless you go into the big supermarkets is all Chinese Duff stuff it's you know some branded uh, we've got access to Philips all the Philips uh, catalog returns so the the brand new you know if you've gone into the shop and said could I have a look at the razor they'll open it up and go okay well yeah okay I don't really want it and then they they put it back to the factory because they can't sell it. It then goes back, gets serviced, and then sold out as seconds. But it's still brand spanking new. It's never even been used. So we have access to pallet loads of Philips electrical goods. We've got access to a wide range of stuff. Um, and this is why this opportunity is now going to start be, being one that financially I need to get moving. Um, the other side of this being works come in from the UK as well. I've got three people trying to source me for work, but I'm trying not to leave Spain because I, I need to set things up here. Um, the frustrating thing is, I mean, if you imagine as a surveyor, I'm being offered 300 pounds a day uh, to do my surveying. And here in Spain, I'm only looking for a thousand euros a month from bits and pieces because I'm not really fussed on making a lot of money. Um, but in the UK, they're going, well, we'll pay you 300 a day, um, plus accommodation, etc. So you, you get in this, like, well, should I go for a week, go for a month, blah, blah, blah. But you're like, need to concentrate, concentrate on staying in Spain. That's, this is why the wholesale stuff, I need to get this moving. Because once that starts churning, I can stay home. I can, you know, because I want to watch my kids grow up. I, you know, I'm, I've spent enough time away from home. Um, over the years and I'm trying to move away from it yes I'm good at what I do um, yes there's a shortage of people can do what I can do but at the same time I'm tired you know I want to have a family life and moving away from that specialist contracting although it's very lucrative um, is going to have to happen 
unless I can develop the software side, which is another thing I need to do once this flu's gone. All right, thanks for watching.